63, the 65, the 66, the SIE exam. All the FINRA exams and NASA exams come here for some help with it. Now, before I get started and into the live, hey, how are you? Um, that's great. I'm glad to see you here. So let's get into this a little bit. Let's start with um, what so if you, with the number one question I get all the time is, what do I do if I'm taking the test tomorrow? So as I say, get the hell off my live. If you're taking it tomorrow, I don't want you on here. Good luck, vibes, congrats, snaps. We're going to do it. Get some sleep. Get off here. Now, if you're taking it tomorrow, you're done. You're studied. Go get some sleep. Get you know, Do whatever you have to do to relax. Glass of wine, smoke a J, whatever it is. Okay? Back massage, whatever. Now, the next step is if you're taking it after tomorrow, like say two days from now. Tomorrow, don't take any tests really. If you want to do a little quizzes, maybe, but nothing big, nothing taxing. Spend the day adding knowledge. Okay? Just spend the day throwing, just watching videos, watching my videos, reading the book, reading some like the crunch and facts, or if you have Notman, the key topics, or if you have Kaplan, the tips and tricks, all these little things. I think Achievable has a cheat sheet too. I'll have to look that up. I think they do. Now, if you're, so that's good for tomorrow and the day after. Now, if it's beyond that, what you want to do is you want to take, if you're within 10 days, you want to take finals every day. In the morning, try to match the time you're taking on the exam if you can. You get the same biorhythms and all that Zen crap, okay? Try to do that. And then every day after you take it, review it in detail. Right and wrong answers. Review everything, not just the wrong answers. Review everything in any section you do bad on. Either reread, watch a video, or take a quiz on to do it to, to get that score up. That's your thing. Be, leading up to that, you want, remember, when you start studying, and if you're just starting now, you want to make sure that you read the book fully. I don't care what test it is. Read the book cover to cover. No tests. No questions. No, no, uh, no highlighting, screw the highlighting, no notes, just read through it. If you want to go through the second time and take notes, that's fine. But we like progress. We want to get through. So those are your plans for taking it. Literally, that's what it is. Taking it tomorrow, stop, get off here. Taking it beyond tomorrow, no test the day before. But every day, but the day before, you're taking finals every day. But you don't need to take finals for a month, like 10 days. You want to do chapter quizzes and like attack the week stuff up until 10 days out and then every day. Then watch videos and read. I think that works. Now, there's a lot of free stuff. Remember, you're not alone. There's not. There's a lot of free stuff on here. There's a lot of free stuff. I have my Facebook group, which is Finder Exam Prep with Capital Advantage Tutoring. Then we also have Series 65, 66 Exam Prep. I have almost 5,000. I mean, it's ridiculous. I looked up. It's like 2,200 active people in there. We have a chat for every class, so every class test, right? So you can go in the room and see the big stuff. And then get help from me and Michael Weiss and a couple other tutors. By the way, Michael Weiss, great tutor. Check him out at series7examtutor.com. Also, um, I have I, I do it at series7exam.org. Okay. Um, you can if you if I'm too expensive and Michael's too busy, which he's pretty busy, I have other tutors that are newer. Good. They're just newer and they're cheaper. Okay. I can help you out with that. If you need the 79, I got a guy Joe out in California, but he's booked up constantly. It's crazy because he's that good. I'm trying to get him to get somebody else. Um, to, to to back him up. Now, you have that. We also have every my membership thing. So every Friday night we meet at 6 o'clock, I do the 65, 66 class, even the 63. At 7 o'clock, I do the Series 7. And then at 8 o'clock, I do the options. It's an options only class. We call it the happy hour because people drink, have wine, and we go to like 8.30. We start at 8, we go to like 9.30 sometimes, unless I have to go. Um, it's every Friday night, Eastern time. Those are in my memberships. So on the membership, if you go into the group, if you go onto my video, there's a little button that says join. Also, if you like my shit, hit like, subscribe, and share this shit, okay? See what happens. Maybe it works. Okay, so now, um, hit the join button, and there's four choices. There's the cheap one, which is just watching old membership videos of these classes. I record them and post them sometimes. Then the next level up is 20 bucks a month. Now, remember, do this on a laptop or desktop, because if you do it on... Um, on an iPhone, that Apple sometimes likes to jack 30% on, so we don't want to do that. Um, $20 a month is just my options videos. Now, my options are crazy, okay? I, they're different than anyone else's. You can use T-charts if you want. I don't, okay? I think my options are off the fucking chart. They're game-changing, totally different, very visual, like common sense. So you kind of understand what's going on. You know the bull there, the break-even, everything. Um, that's for 20 bucks a month to get access to all my videos on options. It's only options. Everything else is free. Anything else I do other than the classes and the options is free. I put however many videos on there. Now, the next step up is 25 bucks a month, which means you get everything below it. You get the once a week, seven class, plus the options, plus the replay of the videos. Then you go up even higher, the 50 bucks a month. That's the option class, the series seven class, 
and the options, videos, and then the membership replays, okay? That, so if you think about it, we meet every week, pretty much. I mean, even doing not Christmas, the Christmas EV, right? Um, every Friday we meet. And once in a while, it'll be a Sunday if I have something going on, on Friday, but it's either Friday or Sunday. I don't like Sundays because I finally get to see football. Okay. Now, hey, how are you? What's up? Hey, congrats. That's awesome. Now, um, if you haven't noticed, this isn't live. I'm, I'm recording this, right? You, you did figure that out, right? I'll be live in a second. Just as soon as I get this shit out of the way. Now, if you think about it, paying 50 bucks a month if you're doing options, okay? That means you're meeting two times a week, which is eight lessons, which is what? Six bucks a lesson. It's pretty cheap. I, I think so. I'm selling myself cheap. Okay. Anyway, those are all the things. If you also, um, what other? So also, check out Susie Rhodes at Passmaster. You can check out Brandon Riff over at Basic Wisdom. You can check out uh, Brian Lee at Teske. You can on this beautifully warm summer day, I'm going to give you a little information on how to study for the exam. First of all, read the fucking book. You got to read the book, okay? If you try to just do questions, you're going to end up coming to me or another tutor and spending a lot of money. Read the damn book. Can't say that enough. Get through it one time. Don't take a lot of notes unless you're a really good note taker. But if you take, the, if you take a lot of notes, what's going to happen is you're going to sit there and take forever to finish it. Get through the book one time, one time at least. Try to get the big picture. Options, maybe you gotta do a couple times through practice exams. But then just start taking quizzes on each chapter. Each chapter, take 10 to 15 questions on each chapter. Anything you get less than a 75 on, reread the chapter or that section, whatever it is. It's time consuming, but you gotta do it. Then once you're passing all them, then start finals. Finals, doing finals is not studying. Doing finals is to find out where you're weak. That's not a form of study. Yes, you're going to get advice from people to say, just take a lot of tests. You know what? You don't meet the 50% of people who fail doing that because you're now doing something else. This job takes that kind of dedication. You need to read, quiz, and then study. If you need help with options, go. Either hire me, hire someone else, talk to people, or I have a bunch of videos on YouTube that will help you, okay? Now, after you do, if you've done all the quizzes and the finals, every time you do a quiz, do a quiz, after, do a quiz, reread the chapter. Once you get to the finals, take a final. Then the lowest two sections, reread those chapters. It's testing and reading, testing and reading, both of them together. I'm going to repeat that. That's my fucking mantra. You got to read the book. If you don't, you're going to have a problem. Also, don't look for which vendor mimics the exam. None of them do. Very few, you're going you're gonna to hear from people, oh, Kaplan does, STC does, Achievable does. None of them do. You may get lucky on a few, but that's not what it's about. You're not trying to mimic the test. Yes, that'd be great. If I could write a bunch of questions that looked like the exam, I'd be a millionaire, okay? Instead of just a hundred air, okay? So no one does it. There's not one vendor. And FINRA is super aggressive about not letting people mimic the exams. They sued training consultants like 10 years ago because your questions are so damn close. Nobody wants to do that. And the Roman numeral stuff, yeah, people do Roman numerals because it's easy to write questions that way. If somebody asks me to write questions, if I have to do the A, B, C, D ones, I, I could probably do like 10 questions an hour. You give me Roman numerals, I can probably bang out 30 questions an hour. Maybe, maybe less, but a lot more because Roman numerals are easier to write and that's why they have a lot of them. I want you to treat the tests as a way to test your knowledge, not to mimic the exam. The more you know, the easier it is. Follow me on YouTube. I hey, everyone. Welcome to the live. How is everyone doing? Live from Chatham, New Jersey. It is... Me. Yeah. Okay. Hope everyone's doing well. Happy Thursday. Um, we got March Madness going on. It's going to be over soon, but we got this. Okay. I don't know who's going to win because my bracket was freaking busted after the second round. I think by Saturday I was done. Out of 78 people, I might be in the 50s, 50s, 60s on the bad side. Okay. Everyone, welcome on. I love it. Boom. Okay. Let's get into some of this shit. Okay. Do boom test on Wednesday. Okay, XTG Alpha. How you feeling? How do we feel about this? Okay. How do we feel about how do you feel? Are you scoring well? Are you not scoring well? I mean, what do you, what's your what is your plan for the week? <clears throat> boom. 
On, Tyler, absolutely. You're going to get this stuff. So we're going to practice this tomorrow. That's love. I love that stuff. Just keep at it, my man. Keep at it. We're going to we're going to get this thing. Okay. Just keep. Now, remember, all you're going to do, we finish the book. Now, start doing chapter quizzes, right? Chapter quizzes. And then what are you going to do? Then anything under 70, you're going to reread. Love it. Let me see something. Uh, nope. Maybe that's what I want to do. It. That's where I can read that now. Okay, good. Okay. I don't need to. I don't need a mirrored camera. Okay. Now, sure, I can do opening purchase. I'll get to that. Okay. So open end versus close end, right? So there's high level shit. Okay. So this remember, I have that video. Find on my series seven playlist. The, uh, even if you're not taking the seven, find it. There's a video. Where I do, I compare um, mutual fund versus ETF versus ETN. I compare them, okay? And those are um, those are going to help you a lot. But let's talk about it. so an open end fund. They constantly issue shares. You buy it at NAV plus a sales charge, okay? You buy it at NAV plus a sales charge. Um, what you're going to do is you they, they at the end of the day, um, max sales charge is eight and a half percent. They they act just like and then close on and open end funds inside of the same. They're both actively managed. Okay. So we got this. So now, Trevor, don't worry about the math so much. You can literally say no to the math and still get a 99. Now, moving on from this, if we have a um, open end fund, it issues constantly. You buy it at NAV, you buy it from a funder sponsor. They have different classes. They can only issue common stock, but they have different classes. Class A is a front end load, class B is a back end load. Class C is a no, no sales charge, but they charge a high 12B1 fee. Can't be called a no load. Then there's a no load, right? The no load has no sales charge, and it has a 12B1 fee of 0.25 or lower. Now, close end fund. The, the same thing. They raise money. one. They issue shares one time. That's the difference. They issue share one time, and then if you want to buy shares, you're buying them at the market price plus or minus a commission, right? Um, if you buy them, buy at the market. You buy at the ask. You sell at the bid. You can buy them on margin. You can sell them short. All that shit, okay? So you can do all of that stuff. That's that's awesome, okay? So now, there are closed-end funds. Everyone goes, give me an example. I don't know. Blackstone, BlackRock has a bunch of them, right? So, again, open-end trades all day. It trades one time, you know, basically at the close. You If you buy 10 in the morning and I buy 2 in the afternoon, we get the same price. If on a closed-end fund, boom, you buy it at, two in, at 10 in the morning, I buy 2 in the afternoon, we're probably going to get different prices, okay? Um, I think that works. Okay. High level stuff. Okay. I have that video. Find my video where I call mutual fund versus ETF versus ZZ10. It's a pretty good one. Okay. Uh, hold on. Steven, hold on. We got to get to Steven a little bit. Steven! Boom, baby. I fucking love it. Okay. 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 Now, conversion ratio and parity calculation, don't worry about it too much. Let's see. No. No, I don't want that. I want that. Okay. Now let's get this shared screen shit going. Don't forget, if you like what I'm doing, hit a like, baby. And share this shit. Let's offend some people. Let's find out somebody you don't like. Send it to him and go, look at this idiot. He fucking talks too much. Okay, so now let's make sure. Let's see where I am. Let's expand that so my ugly ass is out of there. Good. Okay. Now, so, oh, you know what? No, I'll do it this way. So now, okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's say you have an 8% convert. These are so easy. Don't, again, the, the vendors like to kick your ass on this shit. And you should, an 8% convertible bond trading 
at 104. Okay, that's really 1,040. Let's say it's con it converts at 25. Let's say the common is trading at 27. Okay. So far, so good, right? So far, so good. We got this. I'm going to do that so you can see it. Okay. So this is a convertible bond. Horrible question, boom. Sure, we can do that, D10 Duke. But those are two different things. Investment advisor rep, a registrant versus um, versus agent is two different things. But now, so first step is always going to be par divided by the convertible price. And listen, don't sweat it, right? So what happens is sometimes, sometimes what happens is you think that it's convert like you think, oh, it's a par bond versus a preferred. Even if you come up with the wrong one, as long as you're doing a thousand or a hundred, your numbers will kind of jive. Okay. So now, so let's get into this. So we have this first step is par divided by the convertible price. So you're going to do a thousand divided by 25. Do a thousand divided by 25. That's going to give you the ratio. A thousand divided by 25 because that's the ratio of I mean, convertible price. That's going to give you a ratio of 40. That means you're going to get 40 shares for every bond that converts per bond. Okay, so you're going to get 40 shares per bond. I like that, okay? Now, so now how do we figure out whether we should convert or let it be called, whatever it is? So now we're going to just do this. Oh, you know, let's add in here. Let's add another caveat to this. Let's say it's callable at 103. Now, so they call the bond, and we have to decide. First step, part of out of other... Part divided by the convertible price. Boom. Okay. So part divided by convertible price 25. That gives me 40 shares per bond. 40 shares for every bond I convert. So now the question is, what is that worth to me? So I'm going to do 40. The ratio. Okay. 40 times 27. That's 1,080. So what happens is we're going to go. If we convert it, we get 1,080 or 108 if you want to say. So if we convert, we get 1,080. Is everyone okay with this? Everyone following along? I think we should be okay. So if we convert, we get 1,080. Now, let's compare. So if I convert it, I get 1,080. If I sell it, I get 1,040. And if it's called, I get 1,030. What do you think the best choice is? I think the best choice is to convert the damn bond at 1,080. Because then I get 1,080 dollars worth of stock. Now, let's talk arbitrage, baby, in case they bring it up. And they will. Arbitrage is when you buy one thing and short another at the same time. Now, let's get into this. If I were to buy the bond right now at 104 and then immediately convert and then sell the shares, convert and sell the shares for 1080, I'd make 40 bucks. I like that, okay? But the problem is there's a good chance if I buy the bond at 104 or 1040, the stock may drop before I get to sell it and I lose money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy I'm going to buy the bond. I'm going to buy this bond at 104, 1040. And at the exact same time, I'm going to short, short, sell without owning 40 shares of stock at $27 to bring in 1,080. And then when I convert the bonds, it pays off my short. Then that works. So that's arbitrage. Arbitrage is when you do buy and sell at the exact same time in two different markets to capture a difference. And that's what you're doing here. I, when I first started, I did merger arbitrage where we were doing the takeover. Companies get takeover of stock. We'd short the want. We'd short, we basically would buy the target and short the take the aggressor. And then we make difference going in and out. Super. It was called risk arbitrage because there's no guarantee. If the deal falls apart, we lose money. Okay. Hope that helps. Hope that helps a little bit. Mary S. Okay. Brandy. Brandy, you're such a fine girl. Okay. Now, um, probably get demonetized on that. Okay, do do you do my do you do my option way? That's the question. Okay, do you do options the way I do them, or do you do them like a T chart way? And that's the problem. A lot of people do them T charts. Okay, I hope you're doing them. I hope you you know you move into my way a little bit. Okay. Um, if not, let's join in. Okay, you can join my thing. I have class tomorrow night. Even though it's Good Friday, it's it's a Good Friday is a good day to learn options. Okay. Again, here's the other thing. If you're using Kaplan. Or, or STC, any of the vendors, especially Kaplan or Pets Perfect. If your scores are in the high 60s, okay? If your scores are in the high 60s on Kaplan, 
then you're fine. Here's the problem. My way works on the real exam and it works on most of the but most of the vendor stuff. But what happens is they ask some convoluted not boom. Okay. They um that's funny, John. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. They have such a sometimes their questions are so convoluted that you can't kind of track. It's hard to like sometimes you're getting it wrong, not because you don't know your shit, you just can't kind of follow it. And that's not the way that I'm not saying there's not going to be hard option questions. But 90% of them are straightforward, easy shit. Okay. Okay. I can. That's all you're at. You didn't ask me to do it. You just asked if I could do it. Okay. Now. Yeah, I'm a dick sometimes. Let's see. New page. I do have a really good video on this, though, I think. Okay, so here we are. I was just going to make sure that it's being shown the right way. Yep, good. Now, oh, there's so Get my ugly ass out of there. Now, this is pretty simple once you get it down. So always remember this way. So when you buy an option for the first time, when you go long a call or long a put, doesn't matter, long an option. That's an opening buy. That's opening. You're creating a position. Okay, that's an opening buy. That has to be followed. Has to be followed by a closing sale. Has to be followed, okay? So that's going to be, so you're going to sell the option. Optium. It sounds like opium. Option. And that's a closing sale. Okay, has to be a closing sale. So if you have an open, remember, it's always open first, then buy, and then close second. So opening buy is followed by a closing sale. But let's say you write an option or sell, write option. That's an opening sale. Oh, remember, always the first thing is an open, right? And it's followed, then you're going to buy back, and then you buy that option back. Not exercise, buy it back. Buy that option. That's a closing buy or closing purchase. I'm not done. So hope that helps a little bit. So long, if you go, if you buy an option for the first time, it's opening buy. Then get a rand of it as closing sale. They always go together. And if it's an opening sale, followed by a closing purchase. Now, let's add one more. Let's do this. This is what I do all the time. I go opening blank followed by a closing blank. Okay, make sure we can still see that. Yep. So I do now I have this. I have buy or purchase and sell. So you can only use them once. So if this goes here, then this then this one has to go here. So if it's an opening buy, it has to be followed by a closing sell. However, if I do an opening sell, it has to be followed by a closing buy. So that's what I do, and I just keep that in mind. That's the only way it works. Hope that helps a little bit. As again, it was quick. It was a quick one. There we go. Ooh, what are we up to? Over a billion. Not bad. Okay. Okay. Advice center. Don't sweat the math. Okay. Trevor, the only math. Good. I'm glad that helps. The only. Who got. Key, how do you say your name? Key? Key Hun, right? I'm guessing. Um, What the fuck are you on my live thing? Go get some sleep. Get off of here. Go watch my. Go watch my crash course videos. Go over investment risks and what the register of can that do. Can and can't do it and get some sleep. Okay. Advice on this 366 of math. Okay. The only math you'll have to do, you have to recognize cap M, sharp ratio, shit like that. You don't have to do the math. You might have to do total return. You might have to do a tips comp a computation. You might, might, might have a break even, but I doubt it, which you should know because you did the seven already. You might have a current yield question. 
think that's it on math. I don't think you get any other math on this test. Oh, maybe a PE or earnings per share. But again, I still think it's all about the theory, baby. It's all about the theory. Okay. Stacy, I think you posted in Facebook this morning about that, right? Nobody helped you out. Okay. So look. For stock on op, stock in an option break even, okay, for a cost basis. These are the ones you need to know. So let's go back on this. Add a new page. This is what you have to remember. So if you buy stock and you sell a call, selling a call does not affect cost basis. So whatever you say, you buy the stock at 20 and you sell, it doesn't matter, call at three. Your cost basis is still 20. Remember, cost basis is what you pay for something. Remember, cost basis is what you pay for something, okay? So if you pay for, so if you bought stock at 20 and you sold the call at three, your cost basis is still 20. It doesn't affect it. That's one of the three things that don't affect cost basis. Covered call, accrued interest, and dividends. They do not affect cost basis. Now, however, on the other side of this, if you buy stock at 20, and then sometime later, like days later, you buy a put, it doesn't matter. They're considered different things. Buy a put at four, that your cost basis is still 20. However, if you do it as a married put, it's considered one position, and your cost basis is 24. So remember, whenever you buy something, so these are the only ones, just short one, they're not going to really kill you. Buy stock, sell a call, your cost base is what you bought the stock for. Buy stock, buy a put. If it's a married put, your cost basis is the break even. If you buy stock and buy put separate days, they're considered separate transactions. And there is all she wrote, not even that big. Nothing crazy. Don't overthink it. Big T. Okay. Helena Gentry, how are you? Okay. Okay, here we go. Margot Teryune. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Margot, we got this. We're here for you. Join study groups. They will help you. I promise. They calm you down. Smoke weed. Get laid. Something. Take the edge off. Remember, it's just a fucking test. It's not that big a deal, okay? It's really not that big a deal, okay? Boom. Just... Just keep it together. Okay, just keep it down. Keep it calm. I want you to think badass, right? Okay, you want you to think you're a bad bitch. You're going to go in there. Before you walk in there, you're going to stand there for a good 30 seconds and stand there like fucking Superman or Wonder Woman. Hands on the hips like you're a fucking hero, superhero. I promise you, stand there for a good 30 seconds and visualize yourself beating this test and being a superhero. It's amazing how much confident you are. You will do it this time. You've studied. You've done the work. You're doing the reading. Margo, you're going to get this. And we are here behind you. We, oh, everyone here, the 34, 35 people on here, plus the 5,000 people, 1,100 people that are actually active in there, in the study group are here. They're behind you, not watching you, not pressure. We're supporting you. We're going to be behind you the entire way. You don't cram as many exams as possible. What you do is you do you do like do chapter quizzes, unit quizzes, 10 to 15 each chapter, anything under 70 reread, okay? Anything under uh, under anything under 70 reread the section. That's your goal, okay? Once you do that anything under 70 reread the section, once you're passing those, then start doing finals. This here's the thing. I'm going to explain it this way. I make a ridiculous amount of money teaching. That's why I do these free shit I'm trying to get back a little bit and make money on the YouTube. I'm making uh, making a lot of money on YouTube. Okay, now, the reason I'm saying this is guess where I make most money from? The people who won't read and just take as many tests as possible. Do not cram the quizzes. Look, if you're a finance major and this is just rehashing for you, yeah, sure, take quizzes. You're good. But if you're learning this shit, uh uh-uh, read the book, watch the videos. I have a bunch of videos in this. The SIE, I promise you it'll help. Watch my videos. Read the chapters. do the quizzes. Do do a mix. Do flashcards. Join a study group. They're all going to help you. I promise. Okay. Okay. 
Arsene, you won't buy, call, and buy stock. It does. It's not a thing. I mean, I guess it would affect cost basis, but that's not going to be on the exam. Okay. Okay, HFT and SPACs will be on the test. They're going to help. Oh, Keon, how are you, my man? This is the first time he comes on here, man, because he is happy because he's the guy I'm talking about when I said he was worried about his tests. But since he passed, he has to suffer like everyone else does. There we go. My man, Keon. Here's the next thing. I'm Everyone who's passed the exam, please tell him to take a day or two off. He passed the seven. He doesn't have a hard deadline for the 66 yet. He will in a few days. Tell him to take a couple days off and, and revel in this fucking win. It's a big fucking deal to beat this damn thing. Okay. Remember, Michael, La Rosa, you don't say you need to. You say I'm going to. Okay. Boom. Keon is the shit. I'm telling you, I Keon fought me. What? When did you buy the fucking option? You didn't buy the options thing until what? No, until Monday night. Until you didn't look at the options videos until Monday night. And you're like, oh, they're easy now. I'm telling you, he he was trying to figure it out, and he's he had, he spent fifty since he was a kid trading options like I did, and then we just kind of um. A guy started when I was 16. I think he started when he was a kid. He was in college or something like that. So he learned how to trade them, but he didn't know how to address them to, like, grandma and grandpa. That's what the options videos do. Okay. So SPACs. Yeah, you might have a question or two. HFT, just know it's high-frequency trading where they fucking rip people off. They jump in front of people. Um, SPACs, what are they? Okay. Okay. SPACs, just to understand. Okay. Uh, it's amazing, Keon. It's um, I mean, You were good. You just needed that tweak thing, right? Okay. SPACs are just when it's like a blind company. You invest in it. It's good for two years. You're going to put money in and you're just trusting the person is going to do well. Their job over the next two years is to find a company to take over an IPO and then make the money on that. And if they don't get the money, if they don't find a target, they give you your money back. The problem with that is you spend two years without growth. So, yeah, you get your money back, but there's no growth. So you have opportunity costs. Okay. Yeah, uh, Sean, 100%. I am telling you, what I yell at them. Every time I meet them at those conferences, I tell them that you get them drunk and talk to them, they'll open. And I said, 100%. The difference between 166 and another is massive. Like it's like the seven, yeah, it's about a 10 to 15% swing, maybe. I swear to God, the 66, I have people go, oh my God, it was just question and answer. And then people go, oh my God, I got the ass kicker test of all time. So just, but I'm telling everyone, the first time you take a test is always your best, is your best time to pass it. Doesn't mean you won't pass on the second or third, but you got to work your ass off for that. First time is always the best. So do not rush it. That's the big thing. That's why I have to put that down. You do not fucking rush taking the test. Take your goddamn time. Because so many people come to me and they go, oh, I took it too soon. I So many times I get them and they go, I'm on my third try. I took the first one too soon. And then if I pressured the second one and now we're under the pressure. You know, that's hard on me. It's not hard. That's hard on me, kids. Okay. Okay, investment advisors. So let's talk about that. So investment advisors, okay, investment advisors, investment advisors are firms that register with either the SEC or the state. They register with the SEC if they're over 110 million or over 100 maybe, or they're over at, or they're or they manage mutual funds. Okay, if they're under 100 million, then they will register. Where? With the state. They will register with the state, okay? So, investment advisors register with the SEC or state, never both. Depends on what they do. If they're over $110 million, they have to. If they're over $100 million, they can. If they're under $100 million, they register with the state. No matter what money they manage, if they're managing a mutual fund, they register federally. That's advisor. That's not the same thing. Agents register. Okay, by the way, after I'm done with this, Go find my Series 63 cheat sheet. I talk about all of this. Agents register on the at the SEC, FINRA, and the state level, okay? Agents register wherever they have an office or where their broker-dealer or retail clients or where if their broker-dealers register where they have a client, they have to register, even if they only have institutional clients. But let me do this one. Broker-dealers register SEC, FINRA, and the state. I shouldn't have said what I said before. Broker-dealers register SEC, FINRA, and the state. Agents register FINRA and the state only, no SEC. Remember that. SEC does not do individuals, okay? So broker-dealers, SEC, FINRA, and the state, anywhere they have a client, 
either in a single retail client or in a place of business. On the on the other side, IAs are firms, okay? IAs register where they have an if they if they have less than 100 million, they register everywhere they either have an office or more than five retail clients. Again, where they have an office or more than five retail clients. That's the IA. The IAR, boom. Yeah, it's um cheat, cheat, cheat. Yeah, it's called the 66 work and dirty. Oh, let me get to you, Todd. Okay. Now, so the IAR registers only on the state level. Remember that the IAR only registers on the state level, nowhere else. Brandy, I agree. You need to come my way, baby. Come on. Come to the dark side on the options. Okay. Mike, you're going. You're going to pass. You're not. You need to. You're going to. Okay. I knew what you meant, Todd. Okay. Um, why five? Duke, find my Series 63 cheat sheet. That it works. Remember, anything for the, remember, guys, anything I say for the 63 will absolutely be on the 65 and 66. So anything I say on the 66 won't be on the 60. Doesn't mean it'll be on the other way. But anything that I say for the 63 is also for the 65 and 66. I promise you. Okay. John, there you go. I love it. I even got uh, John Katina's Katita comes on here sometimes. He had he's such a smart kid and a hard worker, but he had he just has trouble with his exams. He finally got them all done. I think he went my way in the options. Okay. Okay. Boom. Take it easy, baby. Let's get some sleep. Make sure you make sure you go through my my crash course playlist. If you have already, get some sleep. Sleep is important. I swear to God. Sleep is if you're do not no one who's taken no one, anyone who takes the test tomorrow or that whenever, do not stay up the night before cramming. You gotta get some sleep, people. Keon, you need to be drunk by now. Go get, get some drinks. Okay. Um, and I got that. I saw that little alert, by the way, Keon. Okay. Yes. Boom. I love Trevor. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. It is much more understanding the concepts and maybe the parts of it, right? Like, so for present value, you need future value in turn, you need the rate of return in the number of years. And for 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 present value, you need future value, number of years, and rate of return. For Future value, you need present value, number of years, and rate of return. Is that going up? Those are different things. You just know the concepts and what they're for. That's much more to my okay. Um, I bet it would affect your cost basis, but they're not. Usually, you don't on this test, you wouldn't buy stock and buy a call. That's a double bull. That's not really a strategy for this exam. For real world, yeah, I'm sure it would affect your cost basis because you'd be buying stock and buying that, but I think they're not going to go there. Okay. Okay, handle the SPACs thing. They will talk about it, but not heavy, I promise. Like one question, okay. Stacy, get, go get some sleep. You're rocking it. You're Stacy, you got this shit done. Go watch my crash course stuff. If not, at least watch my quick and dirty and then the third and then my third the 30 minute quick and dirty and then the gorilla style. That'll help you. I also have a taxes video in that crash course thing. Stacy, we got this, right? But why are you on here? If you take it in the morning, hopefully you're taking it in the afternoon. Because if you're on here, get the fuck off my live. Go get some sleep, kid. And if you have, oh, go through the Kaplan tips. Um, I think they had you said, I don't know if they still do the tips thing, but if not, it's not a big deal. Um, go through my crash course stuff, and it, I promise it'll help. But stay calm, Stacey. Right? We're going to get this. We are pulling you through. We are with you. Here. As Ashley says, we got you. We are with you on this, okay? Boom. We love it. Okay. How does the actual exam go on CAPM? The videos on CAPM go over some insane from you. Yeah, so. Yeah, don't worry about that. You're, yeah, you're not going to. Don't worry about it. Do, do, uh, they just go into shit. You're not going to. You're not going to have to do the math. The only one you might. You're not going to even have to do it, but you might have to recognize it is um, sharp ratio. So remember, sharp ratio is your return minus the risk free rate. Okay. Oh, my dog's yelling at me. Working it. Trying to be pet. Um, it's the return. Minus the risk free rate over standard deviation. Okay, now, now this is what somebody two years ago saw a question. Haven't heard it since. The trainer ratio is similar, but it's return minus the risk. I have two dogs demanding to be pet here under the table. Um, return minus the risk free rate over beta. So trainer ratio is that over beta, and sharp ratio is that over standard deviation. But again, it's literally about Am I getting enough reward for the risk I'm taking? Again, sharp ratio is am I getting enough reward for the risk I'm taking? Remember, CAPM is all about trying to find expected returns based on expected risk. The, the matchup of risk and reward. That's what they're doing. Okay. Keon is the man. He he 
He needed, like, he knew his shit. He just needed to someone to tell him he knew his shit. Okay. To my series seven on Tuesday. Oh, 71. Okay. Okay. Here's my deal on this. Read the book one full time at Ditchy. Get through it. Get it done. You can take, you can take the sixty three in five days. So let's overdo it. <coughs> Try not to die. Um, focus on reading the book first. Read the book cover to cover one time. Okay. And then guess what you're gonna do? Read it fucking again. You have two weeks. Read it twice. Then you're gonna do two, two finals. Do the chapter quizzes, the practice exams, whatever you have. Then do every test you can. Okay. Just test test once, maybe twice a day. Review it in detail. Take another one. Review it in detail. Then then watch videos and stuff like that. You're going to be pulling your hair out by the time, end of two weeks. Near the end, maybe you can start opening the seven book. But after, since you just missed, you're going to be fine. The day after you take the 63, go back and reread the seven book, okay? Because they should give you four weeks for that, whether they want to or not. Um, go back and reread the seven book cover to cover, no notes or anything. Then do chapter quizzes, then do finals. Because you'll read that book again and be like, holy crap, these are all things I saw on the exam. And you'll be like, I got this. Okay. Yeah, so I have a cheat sheet. My, so here's the thing. So, Todd, if you're taking the 65 or the 66, you go to my 65, 66. Um, crash course. I got to think of a better name because it just, I, it's like my mind literally says I don't want to remember it, even though I know what it is every time. So you go to the crash course. Inside of that, there's a bunch of videos, but there's two that will really help you. The 63 cheat sheet and the 66, 566 cheat sheet. That covers the whole exam, okay? That covers the whole exam. It's the 63 cheat sheet covers the regs portion. 65, 66, quick and dirty covers, oh, hold on. The 63 quick and dirty covers all of that shit, okay? Covers the regs part. The 65, 66 quick and dirty covers the uh, the rest of it. That's the exam, okay? As long as you're studying, you should be fine, okay? They, you, okay, they, they can't, Florida, they're going to use the part, the tax idea of the partnership, the partnership, okay? That's what they do, okay? And then it gets passed through, okay? Because you have to use that and you need the articles of, um, you, you need the, what do they call it? The partnership agreement and all that, and then the certificate to open it up. So it's going to be the tax ID of the partnership and that's right, and the name of the general partners. Okay. Yeah, they should. They abs I think they absolutely do. Alonzo, welcome back. Okay. Um they change, I think, yeah, they they have literally they have an almost an unlimited number of questions. Because of an algorithm that changes shit all the time. But I'd say if you really want to test yourself, get the achievable, learn from there. And then as a supplement, get it from my link from Michael Weiss. You can get um you can get the cap and QBank for like 40, 50 bucks. It's pretty cheap. Okay. Yeah, again, don't worry about it. I, what I just taught you is probably all you need to know. Boom. Okay. So are ETFs actively pet? Okay. So as far as the test goes, think they're passively managed. Yes, with Arca and Kathy Woods, they're actively, but they're a separate kind. So just think ETFs are passively managed. All they do is rebalance every quarter, okay? Chris Woods! Um, they're, they're passively managed. They don't, um, they don't try to beat the market. What they do is they set up their percentages, right? They set up their percentages. And then what happens is, at the end of the quarter, shit gets out of whack a little bit. So they rebalance everything, then bring it back to the original percentages, and then they go wait to the next quarter. So it's passively managed. Whenever you see the word rebalance, it's passive. No, don't worry about it, Jackie. Um, they'll look. Here's a good thing. They're not going to give you both, right? So if they change it to T plus one, they'll say, knowing that settlement is T plus one, blah, blah, blah. They're going to, they're not going to give you a choice of T plus one and T plus two in May. Don't worry about that. They're, and I usually, once it changes, it takes a couple months to go into the system. But what they're going to do is they're going to kind of like delete, they're going to take back, suppress all the questions that have T plus two in it, 
rejigger them, rewrite them. They probably already rewritten it. And then once they do it, they switch it. So they will never say to you, oh, T plus one. No, next year they won't they won't even address it. But this year, they'll they're not going to give you both choices. Maybe in a couple of years they'll say, okay, there's something T plus two or T plus one. But right now they're not going to do it to you, I promise. Or they'll leave it in there as a challenge question that doesn't matter. Man, yeah, the CRC is a hard fucking test, okay? Um, um, yeah, the CRC is bad, hard, man. That's a hard test. But you get, hopefully you don't, I don't know how long you have to wait to do it. But the CRC is, they look, because here's the thing. If you're dealing with hope, people's money for retirement, they're going to make sure that they are on your ass to make sure you know everything, okay? I meant to get out of here early on a Thursday, okay? Wholesaling versus a limited partnership units. Interesting. Now, hold on one second. I've never, wholes- I've never heard of wholesaling limited partnerships. I always know that it's... I mean, I get it. You know, I get, you know, it doesn't even have to be, I guess it could be an institution where you're buying, yeah, I guess so. So you're buying a bunch of them, right? Okay. Right, hold on one second. So um, I guess so, they're buying them and then they, yeah, that's the only thing. Because it's like the wholesaler for any kind of mutual fund, right? They get the access to them and then they just sell them. They own them and then they sell them out to the public for a little bit, right? Like when I think of wholesalers, I just think they're out there pitching funds to the FA, taking them to get drunk and them, taking them to the strip clubs and golf and all that shit. Um, Although Bank of America, about 2004, 2003, some guy in Arizona spent 35 grand one night at a strip club on a business thing. So Bank of America the next day came out and said, if we ever see a adult entertainment place on a credit card, it's immediate termination. You can go. You just can't use a credit card. Okay. Now, um, so the wholesaler, right. So I guess it's the same thing. They're just buying the limited partnerships and then selling them out to their clients. Yeah. That's literally what it is. Okay, Diego, I'll get to you in one second. Now, options class. Okay, so yeah, Sir Finch, how are you? So here's the deal on this. The options class, okay, if you want to join that, if you join, that's good. So if you want to join, you go find my, on my YouTube channel, hit join. Now you have a choice. You can pay the $20, 19 bucks for just the videos. Now remember, 19 bucks a month. So remember, anything you buy above gets everything below. So if you pay $19, you get the videos. If you pay $25, you get the classes and the videos. Hold on, there's Finder class. If you pay $50, you get the options class, the Finder class, and the videos. Quite the bargain. So think about it. We meet every Friday, so that's eight classes a month for $50. Bucks. That's like six bucks a class. I'm giving this shit away, okay? And you get the options video to watch as much as you want. And you see the old, all the old membership videos. I promise you they'll help. What you do is if you sign up, sign up tonight. Don't do it on a laptop. Don't do it on your phone because Apple adds 30%. Do it on a laptop or desktop or whatever or an Android, I guess. Um, <clears throat> then make sure around 3 or 4 o'clock, make sure your notifications are on. And, guys, if you like my shit, hit like. I have sense on here. I'm saying it. Like, subscribe, share, all that shit. Um then sign up, hit the join button, pick one, and then tomorrow afternoon, make sure notifications are on. Check the membership tab or the community tab, and you'll see the link for the Zoom. They go out around 4 o'clock, uh, three, between 3 and 4 Eastern on Friday before the thing. Okay, Eastern time, baby. It's all Eastern time. Hope that's okay. Because my wife said you should do a later one. Um, You should do a later one. I'm like, no fucking okay. Todd, I appreciate it. Thank you for saying that. Okay. I try to make it fun because if it's not, I bore the shit out of myself, right? If Like I just don't – I can't just sit there and read, right? It's just like if you need it, if you wanted to hear one monotone voice, you could just buy the Kaplan videos and just do that way. Okay. Dave A. Okay. Now, it's funny. I just got hired for a, a, a class to do – a. this is going to do – I have three places that I'm going to start doing classes for like on a regular basis. And they go, well, you can't wear your hat in there. I'm like, what? I've been wearing my hat since I was 12. I, I can go without it. I just got to shave my head then. Okay. I get lazy with this hat on. I look like um, a, an ugly Einstein without my hat, without the hat on. 
Not as much hair, though. Okay. Private equity firms, don't worry about it. Just know that if it's a private fund advisor, so Chris, a private um, a private fund advisor, they give advice to like PE and hedge funds. If they have under 150 under management, then they don't have to register with the SEC, but they have to report their financials. If they're over 150 million, then they have to register with the SEC. If it's a venture capitalist fund, they don't have to register with the SEC ever, but they do have to report their financials. That's what you need to know. Okay. P and PE funds are like, they're not going to be that heavy. It's going to be like a hedge fund that just does what a business development company does. For the six, the biggest things are mutual funds, annuities, communications, and customer accounts. I mean, I could also add in suitability, but the biggest ones are investment mutual funds, annuities, customer communications, and customer accounts. That's going to be the big, big brain. You Listen, Diego, you missed a seven by a little bit. You're going to destroy the six. I promise you. Okay. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, I'm glad I tried. Again, Todd, I'm glad I tried to make a little bit of fun. Because like I said, I would blow. I wouldn't say that because it got delisted. De I would not be happy if I just had a read from the script and I didn't have some personality. So my ADD and nut job helps everyone else out. Okay. Davey, okay. College degree seems to be required for. Well, here's the thing, Cody. If you get the degree, then you can get the SI. You can get the SA while you're getting a degree. Look, a degree always helps, but I think some of the relationship banker level stuff you can do without a degree, but I would, I, it would help to have one. But they don't need it. And then maybe you get it while you're there, get your foot in the door, get it while you're there, and then you can be earning while you go. Or if you can get your degree, get it, and then bang out the SA. Best chase is degree and SIE. If you don't, the SIE will not offset the lack of a degree. It will help you. Like if they don't need a degree and you have the SIE, that reminds If they don't need a degree and you have the SIE, you'll be ahead of other people who don't have degrees applying for the job, but you most likely won't be ahead of people who have degrees, okay? So all things equal, SA helps you. But a degree trumps that stuff, okay? Okay. But a degree but no SIE is better only because they want the degree. And you can get the SIE. The thing is you can get the SIE, the 63, 65, or 66 all on your own without being sponsored. Okay. Yep. If you want to talk to a customer, I agree. You have to make sure that you know, that you're always trying to. You have rules about what you can can and can't do. Okay. Look. Where are you? Oh, I lost it. There we go. Okay. Um, Chris, that's awesome. Okay. Arsene. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I do think it's a lower level than the CFP. I, I don't know that it's low. It's definitely lower than the CFA. I'm not sure about the CFP. I think it is a little bit, but again, the CFP, if, if you're trying to get something to replace the CFP, just get the CFP. I get not the CFA because that's a bit, it's a three-year exam at worst. I think the soon as you can get it is 18 months if you're an animal. Like you take June, December, June, right? But I still think it's almost because the problem is yeah, it takes four, what, six weeks to get the results. So you have to kind of study for the old one that you didn't know if you passed or failed. And then once you find out you passed, you go for the next one. It's not really fair. So it's really a three year thing. CFA is badass, right? CFP is damn good. SEMA, not as many people heard of it. You, The problem with the CMA, and get it because you can put it after, I think you can put it after your name, is that nobody's ever heard of it, but they've heard of CFP and CFA. I appreciate it. The phantom task. Sorry, phantom tax sucks because IRS is a bunch of greedy bastards that want their money all the time. So they're not going to wait for your shit to mature to get it. Chris, you're not awesome. Okay. Okay. His Thursdays are weird. Either I'm balls out busy or I'm like just right on time with everything. Okay. Let's be the study for me. Okay. Monday the 8th. Um, yeah, I would focus on STC now. You can watch training consultants' videos or my videos or STCs, but I would focus more on STC now because I think they're closer to the exam. 
Training consults are fine as a supplement, but I do think they're a little easier than the exam. I mean, some people think they're not. So you know what? Let's do this. If you're going to take tests every day, alternate. STC, TC. STC, TC. Alternate. But you have to make sure you review them in detail. The reason I'm saying alternate because it keeps you like your mind agile enough that you can move that you, that you can see different types of questions and still find the answer like find the question you're looking at so i would think go for i would take training consultants one day stc the other go back and forth back and forth that will help you the most and it sounds like you're scoring better so when we meet on the fifth you're gonna you're gonna be ready you're not gonna need me which is awesome okay i think did we hit the end Thursdays again. Thursday again. Thursday's a busy night. I don't expect anyone under the age of 25 to be on here. Thursday, especially Thursday. The, what is this? The second busiest night of the year. Wednesday before Thanksgiving and good for and Thursday. Holy Thursday are the are some of the biggest. Okay. That is a big deal. So yes, Cody, if you're a fucking closer, that will offset a lot of other things. So if you have if you if you're breaking records and you're kicking the shit on sales. That will that will definitely. I don't know if it'll matter more than a degree, but it'll get you a second and third look because they want money. If they th if they have a place that they like, if you go to a Morgan Stanley or some place or, or an Edward Jones and you can bring shit in, they're gonna like you. That's simple. That's awesome. Yeah, but the question is, do you have a? I mean, so did you did you just start? If you can look, you're young enough. Go to fucking college. I think. You could even probably, I know that the seven counts as a class, okay? But look, here's the deal. If you have a high sales result at 21, I mean, if you do, that's great. If not, get a fucking degree. I'm just saying right now, this day and age, it's important now. It doesn't even matter what, it, get it in fucking, get it in communications, basket weaving. Who the hell cares? Just get the piece of paper. That's all they want. They don't even care if it's finance or econ. I mean, it'll help, but you'll be so bored. Some of my best students and best people on the trading desk were not finance majors. They were econ, political science, whatever it was. A lot of them played sports, so they couldn't take the heavy classes, but okay. And so, okay, so at 21, you're competing with them. There you go. That's a good thing. That is a thing that would, if you do that, there's a lot of places that you could go to. So if you're 21 and you're beating up on old people who've been there forever, you're going to piss them off, which is fine. But then they'll want you. That, oh, that'll that probably trump a degree. If because sales is sales. If they no, they may want you to get a degree to go any higher. Like they may bring you as a salesperson. Go look. If you want to move to any higher, you're going to need a degree. So maybe get the job, and if you can, and then get your degree as you go. Get your associates. Tell them. And, and sometimes they have to. Some of the bigger firms have tuition reimbursement plans. So you don't. Have, and don't go. And like I said, if you have a job, you don't need to go to the best place in the world. Just get go to local school, a close school near you, and just go in there. That's the best thing. I mean, I, I have four kids and I'm trying to get my last one to finish. I mean, he's playing lacrosse, so he'll never, he'll play it. He'll, he'll, he'll somehow, he'll graduate the day, his last day um, of playing lacrosse for the team is, but yeah. Okay. Not too shabby people. Cody, you're going to be fine. If you can sell, that's the thing. Salesmen run the fucking world. You can talk about AI and all that shit. It doesn't matter how good your shit is. If you don't have a salesman, you can't, you can't run this world. You can't do anything. If you can't sell your product, nobody cares. Okay. Guys, I appreciate this. And again, my two favorite nights of the week, Tuesday night and Thursday night. Please, if you like what I'm doing, hit a like, hit a share, share this shit, and, you know, piss off someone. Um, oh, yeah, thank you very much for hitting that like. I don't know if you had it. I have no idea. Um, I'll see you. Have a great, good Friday. Don't get too drunk tonight. Have a good Easter. Even I'm teaching on Easter, which is crazy. Just Because I've the wait list is just insane. And I'll see you in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, five days. I'll see you in five days minus one hour. And um, everyone, have a good night. And on that note.